This Week at NASA. Mission managers say November 30th will be the new targeted launch date for STS-133. This revised schedule gives engineers and technicians ample time to correct a series of unrelated problems that delayed Discovery's launch earlier this month. STS-133, with crew members Commander Steve Lindsay, pilot Eric Bowe, and mission specialists Alvin Drew, Tim Copra, Mike Barrett, and Nicole Stein, is the last shuttle mission for 2010, and the next to last planned flight in the history of the space shuttle program. Discovery would lift off to the International Space Station on its final voyage at 4.02 a.m. Eastern on November 30th. And now, centerpieces. By going to the moon and returning humans safely, the United States became a technology leader. NASA Chief Technologist Bobby Braun focused on the space race of his generation as one of more than 20 speakers featured at the second TEDx NASA conference held at Christopher Newport University in Newport News, Virginia. Hosted by NASA's Langley Research Center and the National Institute of Aerospace, TEDx NASA focused on innovation, education, family, technology, art, and space travel. They built rockets 36 stories tall. They built engines more powerful than anything we've ever built before. Joining Braun was Jim Green, director of NASA's planetary science mission. Our early humans on Earth looked into the sky and they incorporated the stars. They created their, their shapes and figures, constellations. They saw the wandering stars, which we now know are planets, and they saw the comets. But the comets got a bad rap. TED is a nonprofit organization devoted to sharing ideas between three different disciplines technology, entertainment, and design. The late NASA research pilot and X 15 astronaut Joe Walker was among eight pioneers of flight, recently inducted into Nevada's newly established Aerospace Hall of Fame in Henderson. Walker was cited for his leading role in collecting data about, among other things, flying at hypersonic speeds, use of reaction controls for flight above the atmosphere, piloting techniques for reentry, and flight instrumentation. On August 22, 1963, Walker's X-15 established an unofficial world altitude record of 354,200 feet, more than 67 miles, during a mission launched near Fallon, Nevada. His altitude record stood for 41 years until eclipsed by Scale Composites Spaceship One in 2004. It's hard to believe we've been doing this since 1974, uh, but it's a tradition well worth continuing. Employees making significant contributions to the headquarters community were recognized at HQ's annual honor awards. Administrator Charlie Bolden and Deputy Administrator Laurie Garver thanked civil servants and contractors for their achievements and commitment to America's space program. This is a privilege to recognize the 24 of you who are awarded today. All of you really deserve our thanks and appreciation. Numerous awards were handed out in recognition of group and individual achievements, including those for outstanding leadership and exceptional service. Aboard the International Space Station, Expedition 25 crew members Doug Wheelock and Scott Kelly offered a special Veterans Day tribute to the nation's servicemen and women. We wanted to let you know how much we appreciate your sacrifice and your years of service uh, for both your countrymen, your families, and for people that you'll never even have a chance to meet. Wheelock, an Army Colonel, and Navy Captain Kelly display the Medal of Honor awarded to Army Sergeant Lester R. Stone, Jr., who gave his life in the line of duty in Vietnam on March 3, 1969. From the International Space Station, we'd like to thank you for your service. The Marshall Space Flight Center joined with Team Redstone and the U.S. Space and Rocket Center to celebrate American Indian and Alaska Native Heritage Month. Guest speaker was retired NASA astronaut John Harrington. A member of the Chickasaw Nation, Harrington was the first Native person to launch into space, 
serving as a mission specialist aboard STS-113 in 2002. I'm in this position where I be a role model to kids that you might not think they have a role model as an astronaut. The, uh, you know, growing up, it's just the nature of who I am and I'm my family that uh, I think is inherent to who we are, that we have this pride in you know, our heritage and uh, that pride I think goes into our work as well. And also that is, when I got to NASA and I realized that, you know, guys Native American, I felt like I had a little bit extra that I had to prove that, you know, hey, I'm, I'm here because I'm capable and I can do the job and, and it was a challenge. And I, I really looked for the opportunity to, to prove my worth and honor who, who my, my heritage is. The event also featured flint napping, teepee building, and other customs demonstrated by members of the United Cherokee Anayangwea Nation and samplings of authentic native foods, along with traditional music and dancing by flautist Jimmy Yellow Horse Webster and performer Tamara Hicks. NASA headquarters, the Southwest Interagency Committee, and the Department of Health and Human Services Observe Native Heritage Month by co-producing a program featuring a keynote address by celebrated poet, musician, and member of the Muscogee Creek Tribe, Joy Harjo. We will go. The event showcased other cultural presentations as well, including music by the Black Bear Singers. And that's this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.